I'm going to now ask uh, Supervisor Ross Mirakarimi uh, to talk about what the impact uh, has been on our communities here in San Francisco and what can we do to all work together uh, to address some of the, the issues that have been raised uh, this morning. Thank you, Jeff. And I want to say how honored it is to be up on the dais here with all the distinguished panelists and scholars uh, who have been working so hard on this question of public safety and recidivism. As I said in my opening remarks, certainly as San Francisco um, grapples, I think, with uh, staggering and uh, sustained spikes of crime rates, especially violent crime, um, there is another sort of um, more violent uh, but yet more visible um, sort of stream that I think that we have yet to recognize, and that's the violence of, I think, indifference and inaction, and the complacency that I believe that many municipalities um, really suffer from because I think of the over-reliance that they place on the state government or the federal government um, to address, I think, these questions about those who are being incarcerated and what is to become of them once they exit from the prison system. There is clearly a very disproportionate ratio that while our state, which is demonstrated like Texas, its desire to just continuously to build more prisons and its um, you know, need to incarcerate and continuously uh, to incarcerate, uh, which mirrors sort of the federal strategy, but yet what is not in sync with that is the funds to address the need for those who would be coming out of the prison system before that they come out and certainly as they would integrate back into society. So naturally, that deflects the responsibility onto municipalities. And because of the sheer numbers of parolees, formerly incarcerated, that are coming out of the prison system, that come back to the place um, where they had once lived or where they decide to live, um, then it becomes the local government's sort of burden to shoulder um, if they are able to, I think, reconcile what was not able to be satisfied by the state um, and be able to um, shore up what wasn't um, necessarily achieved before. And that is a huge, huge weight to put on our local government. And if we don't recognize, I think, the long emergency, and that long emergency is the fact that while newspapers project headlines of violent crime, what has always been the long emergency in San Francisco, and while we see blips of it, there is still the sustained trend of just how many uh, formerly incarcerated people live in San Francisco actually repeat their offenses. The statistic that was mentioned earlier, um, which really has some connection and relationship to some degree here in San Francisco, about the fact that San Francisco's uh, African American population is at about 8%, that's not necessarily correct of today's year. It's about 6%. And of all the major cities in the United States, Next to the cities that were um, engulfed by Hurricane Katrina, San Francisco is losing its African American population faster than any other city in the United States. That is part of, that is part of the long emergency and you cannot disconnect the reality that when we see the fact that 70% per se of those who are repeating their offenses, of that 70%, it's literally 80% of that category happen to be from the African American community because it is also of that figure that is the community that is also incarcerated either locally or in statewide of a population emanating from San Francisco. What that does is then catapults the very responsibility or obligation back onto the local government to try to do what the state has obviously admitted that they can't. And so it requires us to innovate the kind of strategies that many of us are talking about and proudly the kind of programs that I certainly support emanating from the sheriff's department and from the public defender and the district attorney and others who are working with all wherewithal applied to this direction. 
But even when we launched this effort last year to convene this Council of Safe Communities Reentry, what was even more alarming to me was the fact that we didn't even know what the other sort of group was doing. The, right, the old adage of not knowing what the right hand and the left hand was doing on the kind of programs towards reentry. I frankly like the idea of creating a department of reentry here in San Francisco. I think that creating... I think by creating a department such as this is not necessarily you know, another politician's answer for rearranging the deck chairs, but quite frankly, what I'd like to see is having you know, a repository that we can actually pinpoint some measurable goals and measurable outcomes that with all the great talent that is associated in this room here today and those who couldn't be here, yet we would be able to know under one roof exactly where from beginning to end cradle to grave along the assembly line process, where it is we succeed and fail and where we need to certainly shore up, I think, our vision in order to make, I think, what we're all here um, hoping to achieve uh, successful.